Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today we're going to continue on with Patreon Picks, which is where one of my Patreon picks a song and tells me exactly what to listen to, and I check it out. So today's uh, request is coming from Sus Scrofa Musterman. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, they said that I should check out the Ocean uh, Riation. And I'm actually really excited about that because I really dig what the Ocean's done. We've checked them out on this channel before. Uh, they're definitely one of the more interesting bands out there. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what these guys got in store for us today. This one's uh, like 11 minutes long, so you know, kick back, throw that recliner back if you, if you want, and uh, just chill to some cool music. I'm going to assume. Yeah, real calming, real relaxing. A little bit of tension in there, but the chords are resolving very nicely, so it's not an overarching tension, more of a you know, tension for a beat. Interesting, uh, harmony there in the vocals. Ooh, I like that little bass, bass kick rhythm there. Now we got three vocal layers. Love the usage of uh, bells there. Uh, not hand bells, but like uh, xylophone rumba kind of bells. Very sparse, lots of room for the song to breathe so far. That guitar riff almost has like a Latin edge to it. Not like super samba, but definitely samba influence. Really funky. Mix is interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna touch on that later though. Two different screen styles.
really beautiful melodic ideas going on here. Really cool layering and interweaving of the different musical lines from each of the instruments to create an overlaying musical idea. Nice counter melody going on between the guitar and the violin. Maybe viola. I don't know. Definitely uh, a string instrument though. Yeah, I was waiting when this was gonna happen. I mean, six minutes is a long time to go with that restrained feel, but this payoff well worth it. Interesting idea there where they had six bars of alternating chords just up down up down up down and then they had two bars of rising chords and that's when the high fry screams came in just a little cool thing that they were doing with their um, vocal pacing and chord pacing kind of lining them up Really cool effect on that bass. that orchestra last time. Really 
really cool rhythm going on. Uh, the drum work right here. Same chord progression from earlier with the warble bass that I commented on. I'm going to close out on that, I think. Interesting little effect there. Alright, someone's got to hit me up on these lyrics, uh, you know, what the song means, because uh, there's a lot of those, uh, like, science fiction-y transmission sounds going on, and uh, the person who requested this, uh, I think it was them, recently informed me a little bit about some of the Ocean's uh, concepts and how their albums are kind of, a few of their albums are conceptual. Uh, and they all have to do with uh, periods of the Earth's past, like this one comes off the album Precambrian, uh, which I believe, uh, maybe not, I don't know, doesn't sound like uh, one of their one of the Earth's um, eras, so to say, so to speak. I'm not going to look it up now. Anyways, though, uh, I do want to comment about a lot of the music in this song, though. Um, they spent six minutes and ten seconds on a very restrained, calm section. But the interesting thing about the section was that it wasn't all, it wasn't entirely calm. It's not like it was a cakewalk through the section, something you can just chill and relax to. Uh, there's a lot of tension introduced in it, um, even starting from the beginning when I mentioned in the chord progression that the third chord of the four chord loop had a lot of tension in it, even though it resolves fine. The chord progression itself uh, is not a super tense progression because of how it resolves, but that third chord had some heavy, heavy tension. It needs to, it needed to be resolved, uh, and I'm, I'm glad it did, but it still gave a bit of an eeriness to the, the opening overall. Then you have uh, the vocal patterns, which you have the whispered sections, which, uh, you know, for most people, having someone whisper in your ear uh, in the way that he's whispering, kind of, uh, it's, it's tense. I don't think anybody just, I mean, maybe some people just genuinely enjoy being told things in a menacing whisper. I don't know. I'm not going to judge. Uh, but then you also have the fry texture underneath that because all of the lines were layered with a very muted uh i don't know if it's a fry scream or if it was a guttural uh, but definitely a distorted singing style really low in the mix i mean the volume was down on it um so it was under the whisper but it provided that crackly texture there and uh also a little bit of contrast uh because the delivery was different the whisper didn't have as much attack on some of the, the harsher consonants and stuff like that. So you get this differing texture in the delivery of the words and a different texture in the sound that's being created to produce the words. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of tension going on in, in his voice. And uh, then the second time the voice comes around, we actually have a third uh, vocal layer and off the top of my head, I don't remember. I think it was like a higher pitched Maybe it, maybe it was just a pitched one. You had your scream, your 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 muted scream, 
and then the whisper, and then a pitched, a quiet pitched one. I think that's what it was. Um, but yeah, you had your three layers all saying the same thing, but again, different textures, different deliveries. And just, you know, it's, it's six minutes of off settling beauty. Unsettling beauty, I think that's the word I'm looking for. Unsettling beauty. Uh, there's a lot of really gorgeous lines in the guitar work, the bass work. Um, the drums give it a nice momentum, but it's not rushing. It's not dragging. It's just kind of giving a rhythm to the section. Um, there's not a lot of anxiety in the speed. The song is obviously progressing, but it's not speeding there. Uh, nobody's really dragging. No one's holding the song back. It's just kind of existing. And like I said, there's these really beautiful, um, you know, lines going on in in the guitar work. And uh, I think there was some piano or strings. I don't know. There was a lot of instruments, a lot of layers uh, across those six minutes, a lot of different sections. Most of it, though, was really gorgeous. Um, but like I said, it all had this, this little bit of edge of tension to it. Uh, it was just unsettling beauty. There's a, there's a lot of parts where you're like, man, that is gorgeous. And then, you know, one note or like a bar or, you know, just something you're like, oh yeah, that's right. Something's, something isn't right here. Uh, but then it resolves and everything's nice again. And then, of course, you know, they just come in and they remind you that, you know, we are the ocean. We can do whatever we want. We were doing this really awesome stuff, this really pretty, gorgeous, layered stuff. Now, look, we're going to hammer this home. We're going to overdrive. We're going to distort. We're going to scream. Uh, you know, we can do everything. We're, we're reminding you that we are amazing at our jobs. Um, and it's just that part just comes in heavy, um, loud complex uh, just really interesting rhythmic ideas going on uh the the musical ideas kind of pause for a little bit it's more about just being loud getting that sort of a wall of sound uh the power though the pressure the the just this overwhelming feeling of of weight uh on top of or to counteract that light, floaty emptiness almost of the beginning. I mean, we had six minutes of very sparse playing. It was layered. There's definitely some some counterpoint going on. You got your bass line. It's not like it was just one instrument, but it was also very sparse. There's lots of empty space, lots of held out notes, and this is just such a sharp contrast to that. And I, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about the mix a little bit. And I don't want to stay on this topic too long because I want to get back to the composition. But my idea of this actually changed over the song where I thought the vocal screaming was too low in the mix. I thought the guitars were just overpowering it. And thinking back to about the six minute mark, I still feel like then maybe it was a little overpowering but by the end of the song it all seemed to fit for me and I actually enjoyed the mix where it was and I don't know... I kind of forgot to pay attention to that, and I don't know if the mix got better or if I just got used to it, uh, but I really enjoyed how everything fit together by the end of the song. So I'd have to go back and listen and see if the mix changed or if maybe I just got uh, adapted, got used to what was going on. But uh, yeah, it stuck out to me a lot at, at the six minute mark when the heavy stuff came in, but by the end of the track, I don't know, it, it was just good stuff par for the course I, I i enjoyed how it was mixed so uh yeah i don't i don't know like i said it could have been them could have been me on that one uh let's see but yeah so then we go from the heavy stuff and we kind of do this jumping back and forth where we get to this mix of the soft and the heavy where uh, I said it was getting kind of funky. There's some really interesting rhythmic ideas, lots of space given to the notes to kind of breathe. Um, and then we also have the section with uh, the bass, where it's mostly the bass doing this warble thing and kind of laying down the groundwork for a chord progression. Um, and then we have the ending section, which is also... Uh, it appeared two sections before it, which was the part uh, with the low screaming and then the high screaming that I pointed out that lined up with the chord progression. So the ending was mostly a repetition of two ideas back to back. Uh, the bass 
and then oh no it'd be the 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 loud screaming part and then the bass and then the loud screaming part and then the bass to the outro which leads with that same bass uh progression but uh using different sounds and textures to showcase it uh ending with um an electronic wave it could be a sign could be cosine i not electronic guy i can't really tell the difference between saw waves and sine waves and stuff like that but it was definitely more of an electronic sound like an old school 60s synth kind of thing um pre pre modulated though just like the straight line you know pretty basic i think all right throat's a little dry i don't know why um, but yeah, so those last two sections kind of alternate and we see a little bit of a, a marrying of the super sparse beginning and the super full screaming uh, section that came after that. Um, I pointed out in, I don't know, I guess I call it the chorus. It's the only part that really repeated itself. Um, we had a chord progression that went uh, from this, you know, the first to second, first to second, first to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And those were kind of quick. Uh, they were half bar um, bits. Uh, but in the back to fourth, you had your growl. And in the climbing, you had your higher pitch screaming. And it was really interesting that when the chords were lower in the register, you had your growling. And when the chords started going higher, you had your, your fry screaming. Um, I don't know if it really had anything to do with the narrative or anything like that. Not really any musical idea behind it. Um, it was just really cool. I, I liked how they kind of meshed the chord progression, the musical composition with the lyrical composition and lyrical delivery. Uh, just a really cool way to kind of merge those two and have them displayed at the same time in, in, in a similar way. So yeah, that's... Uh, that's the ocean, right? And, uh, like I said, right when it finished, someone's got to hit me up with the story to this. Um, there are a couple of reoccurring ideas. We have, you know, sparseness versus fullness, light versus heavy, uh, tense versus um, depressing. Not not like sad, but just like a heavy weight pressing down. Um, we have these these juxtaposing ideas. Um, but then we also have a reoccurring notion of this, like, radio sound, the the sine wave or whatever that was at the end. It, it was kind of throughout, kind of hidden in a couple of places um, before the ending of the track. Uh, I'm kind of curious how all this plays into the story. I was going to look up the lyrics real quick, but something tells me it's going to be a little too deep for me to pull out on a first try with, like, a couple of seconds to read through it and analyze it. I don't want to... Uh, you know, waste anybody's time. I try to get right to the point with stuff here, even though I ramble. I mean, I, I'm real bad about rambling sometimes. Um, but yeah, hit me up with like a story or something about, uh, you know, what the, at least maybe like a thesis of what the story is about, a couple of sentences, and maybe I can piece things together from that. I'm just real interested in this. I'm probably going to look up the lyrics as soon as I close this out and uh, see if I can piece something together. These guys seem to be very deep, though, um, with what I've read about them in the past and what I know about their concept albums and their naming scheme to their albums. Um, they seem to be very bright people. So um, it would not surprise me if some of the lyrical content went over my head. It would not be the first time. Uh, we tried that once with uh, the Mara Effect by uh, Spirit Box, and I kind of missed the whole point of the lyrics it talked about a concept i wasn't even familiar with uh some sleep demon called the mara or something like that and you know without that background knowledge things just go right over my head and that's probably going to be what happens here with the ocean so like i said i'm not not going to do it on camera but i'm going to probably check out the lyrics and i'm looking forward to any explanations that i can read down in the comments from you guys uh so yeah that one's going to finish this one out though as usual the ocean's just fantastic blew me away this is my type of music i was gonna say my type of prog but i don't know if you can uh, it's not like super hyper proggy so i don't know if it really is prog um you know it's a long song but there's really uh three or four it's only a handful of sections uh, 
The two at the end get repeated a couple of times, and the beginning is mostly one long segment with minor variations. So, I don't know. I really dig this, though. Um, I like the heavy stuff, but you guys know I love my beautiful, slow, layered stuff as well. Uh, not necessarily slow, just uh, melodic sections. It can be heavy. I just really, really love melody. Uh, and I love marrying melody with, like, harsh vocals. That's just, And these guys do that fantastically like even in the heavy parts where the harsh vocals are coming in there's still a lot of melodic ideas going on in the guitars and i didn't even hear it till the end but there's an orchestra or at least a couple of string instruments laying like just widening the sound and providing some extra texture and and chord qualities i mean it's just this stuff's right up my alley this, this, see, if I needed some music just to chill to, I, I often say, you know, I wouldn't play this in the car on my way to the store or whatever. This is something I'd be like, all right, I got a 10 minute trip to the grocery store to, to pick up dinner. You know, this is getting thrown on. I, I can chill with this for a little bit. So, yeah. Good, good choice. Thank you so much, uh, Suscrofa Musterman. Again, I really hope I pronounced that right. Uh, fantastic pick. I mean, this is just good stuff. This is where you guys come in, though. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought uh, of Riation from the Ocean. While you're down there, you can uh, let me know about some ex explanations about what the song's about or if there's other The Ocean songs I should check out. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. You can also check out my Patreon and Twitter. Those links are in the description. If you join the Patreon, you do get to get in the list to be picked for these Patreon picks, and you'll get to tell me exactly what you want me to listen to. All right, uh, I'm actually going to be back tomorrow with a very special Sunday episode uh, because a new song came out, and I really want to react to it. I really want to listen to it. I've been saving it. It's like two days old now, and it's killing me not to check it out. Um... And I just, I don't know when else to post a video, and Sunday has no video, so let's do it. <laughs> That's pretty simple. Uh, so yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard, 9 p.m. UTC as Standard. And until then, you guys stay safe out there, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.